Welcome back to another episode of Handy Creators, where we're finally going to be finishing our kitchen. Yes, thank you for sticking through to this part if you are watching. Today, well this weekend, or this video, we're going to be finishing everything that the kitchen needs. And we want to give you a little explanation why we did not um, unite the video with the countertop one. It's not because we want to torture you guys and drag it along. There's really two logical reasons. One was timing was not on our side. And also, we wanted to do this a separate video because there are going to be some of you out there that are just interested in learning how to do a countertop whether it be for the inside of your house or for the outside or for the bathroom or for whatever. So uh, we thought it best to just make that its own separate video that any, everyone can enjoy. And if you are still interested in seeing our finished kitchen, then you can tune into this video. Yeah. So, and, Well, I think another part was there's a lot of like little things that we still need to do. So yeah. I thought it'd be nice to like give you guys explanations like we do in all of our other videos we really want you guys to know if you want to follow our videos to do it yourself to know what it is that you're actually doing and i feel like if we would have united these two videos together it would have either been a very 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 long video or to make it shorter a lot of information was going to be missed and we didn't want that yeah i mean what's the point of putting a video out there if it's not really going to help you do it yourself so that wasn't an option for us. We're heading outside now and we're going to show you what it is that we're missing. We're going to give you a little overview of what it is that we're going to be doing throughout the weekend and hopefully we finish it in tomorrow. Let's see. Let's just get started on finally finishing this kitchen. So if you saw our last video, we went ahead and installed these concrete countertops. We've given it a long time to go ahead and cure. So we're going to get started on doing the finishing touches. So we have to install the sink and then once we install the sink, we're going to install a piece of door rock, which is what we use for the concrete render it so you cannot see the sink at all the next thing we have to do is install the two access doors that will go right here unfortunately we did not leave as much space as we thought so we're gonna have to cut those woods and we're also going to be cutting the burner and installing the barbecue we're also going to be painting everything and hopefully cooking something on my new <laughs> i like that so the first thing we're gonna be doing is cleaning this sink how i said in a previous video um this was gifted to us so it was from a restaurant of a friend of ours and they upgraded but the material is amazing and we knew that we could restore it and use it even though it doesn't really have any damages whatsoever it just needs a good cleaning and let me apologize for our background view we're definitely not at that type of youtube video that's gonna put everything away and make it super pretty for the video um we want you guys to see what your house is really gonna look like when you do these projects and this is a perfect representation of it obviously when we start working on that we're gonna clean all of this out but you know we don't want to waste time right now because we know that this is gonna constantly keep getting dirty and messy so we're just trying to focus on what it is that we have to do so yes i'm sorry it doesn't look nice but i want you guys to see that making these projects this is what your house is going to look like. It's going to be very messy. I mean, it's all part of it. So let's go back there. Let's go get the supplies and let's get start cleaning this bad boy. To clean the sink, we soaked it in purple powder degreaser as well as detergent. Don't forget to also add some fabuloso. After we let this soak for a few minutes, we grabbed a scrubbing pad and scrubbed the whole sink just to remove any excess dirt that was still there. Once done, we went ahead and pressure washed the remaining material off. After we let the sink dry for a few minutes, we went ahead and tried to install it in place. Unfortunately, there were some bricks that we had to cut in order to make this sink fit to the size that we wanted. To cut the brick, we used an angle grinder with a concrete blade. And once we removed this excess brick, the sink finally set leveled. place we're gonna get, cut a piece of door rock which is the same base that we use for the countertop which is for there. the people who don't know it's this the difference between that one and the one we use for the countertop um the one for the countertop was half an inch thick that one's a fourth of an inch thick because we have very small space to work with here so we went ahead and measured this and then i'm gonna go ahead and cut it to size and hold it with liquid nail 
once it's set, we're going to go ahead and render that portion and it, it's going to look like it was never there. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> so, let's okay. Get started. Let's get cutting. To cut the Duroc, we used a putty knife as shown in previous videos. You can also use an angle grinder to go ahead and make this cut easier. Alright, so with that done for the sink, it's time to go ahead and try to get these access doors to fit. So the first problem we had was that unfortunately the measurements that the uh, vendor provided were not accurate. So we're going to go ahead and make a cut along that line right there. That's where the lip of the actual door is going to catch on. And then we also have to widen the actual um, access door hole just a little bit to to make sure that the, the door fits properly. So we're going to be doing this to this one and we're also going to be doing it to this one and hopefully have the doors installed tonight. So let's go ahead and do that. To cut the excess wood, we used an angle grinder and then removed it using a crowbar. We then used a chisel to smoothen it out and even it as much as possible. This part was not too important since the doors was going to cover this edge and it would not be visible. You will not need to do this if you have the correct measurements. All right, so we officially encountered our first big problem, I think at the whole kitchen build. I don't even have to say anything. The door is too small. What we're gonna do is we're probably gonna um, build like some sort of uh, support, either with concrete or with um, wood pieces, and use that so that the door can go ahead and do this. There's gonna be a gap down here, so we're gonna have to fill that up right here. We're gonna have to fill that up with um, stucco again. I would just recommend order the doors maybe from the beginning before you open, before you, you start build. anything. That way you could have accurate measurements that you took because the ones that were online were not correct. And don't trust the vendor. Yeah, and there's nothing more fun than doing something and noticing it's wrong. Look at that sunset, you guys. We got the most beautiful sunsets here. Let's try to figure this out. To make the stands for both doors, we used a scrap piece of two x four that was left over. We cut it to size and then we went ahead and screwed it into place to the existing frame. With the stand in place, we pre-drilled holes and used concrete anchors to secure the doors. You guys, we put the door. It looks so good, wow. So the wood worked. <laughs> yeah. You can barely notice it. So this. I'm gonna zoom in, look at it right there. Once this is completely in place, we're gonna put some stucco in the gap and then um, align it completely with the bottom part. Anyways, if there's a difference in tone because it was done different days, it's not really gonna matter because we're gonna be painting this regardless. So that's not really gonna affect the final product, but yeah. Looking nice, it's coming together. It's looking great. So yeah, if this happens to you guys, don't be scared by any gaps. We repeated the same process on this door. And for the moment of truth. What? <laughs> Still not enough. What the hell? What? It's enough. Bro, like it's a tremendo trozo. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Today we are going to be finishing hopefully the installation of the doors last night we finished maybe like at 8 30 or so we installed the big door we got extremely backtracked trying to do this but i mean whatever it happens this is the first big 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 hiccup that we come across so it is what it is today hopefully we're done installing everything we might not get to paint i mean we don't know but at least we'll get that done let's go Once we got the right measurement for the door, we went ahead and secured it using some concrete anchors. Okay guys, so we wanted to show you what's been going on with these doors. I'm gonna say it for like the fifth time, order your doors before, as the first thing, before you even start this project. Do not pay attention to what the vendors say because the measurements were completely off online. 
the doors are beautiful they're amazing but the vendors did not give the correct information and that's very important for this type of thing so we as you can tell they're a little bit different this one's flat on the sides um so completely seamless this one's not this one's more on the bulkier which i mean i don't care i think it looks nice like the difference what we're struggling with now is that this one has side ones as well to clip on to screw in but they're two on the edge so this is happening i'm not worried about the fact that it cracks we could always fix that with the stucco again but we just don't know how we're gonna really clip it on so i know how i'm gonna clip it on don't worry you figured I it out honey it out. Worry, gosh you're so smart <laughs> okay so let's keep going at this what i ended up doing is pre-drilling the hole at an angle so that that way once we screwed in the concrete anchor it would not be on the edge that was so hard <laughs> that was harder than i thought do not do the kitchen until you have the doors this is taking twice as long as it should have so we're gonna finish installing that door up for the base inside the access doors and then we can go ahead and install the burner the burner install the barbecue see if it fits good and that's it and once all the door is installed we'll we'll get to rendering so just stick around a little longer and i promise you will have a finished kitchen <laughs> since we were working against time we decided to cut this door up with an angle grinder and then hold it in place with construction adhesive we are done you want to open up hun to show them so we put this little um, the rock on the bottom to give it extra support just like here and we put two bricks to give it some weight on it so it sticks good so it should look something like this when it's completed we want to install everything before making the corrections with our stucco because some things might still like break like that along the way and we don't want to be working back and forth so let's get to that okay burner okay burner it's time to cut your legs off. <laughs> Damn, that was harsh. <laughs> no, I'm not playing. <laughs> We're gonna be cutting your legs off. <laughs> to cut this, once again, we used an angle grinder, but this time with a blade that is meant to cut steel and other metal pieces. For the moment of truth. Well, that didn't work. Let's bring the barbecue. Make sure to always have a set of hands to help you carry something heavy like this. Unfortunately, the barbecue was going in a little bit too snug, so we had to go ahead and trim the countertop a bit just to make it fit. And with a few twists, turns, and pushes, she's finally installed. Let's give them a close-up of what it looks like. Hey guys, so it's a day after and we want to show you a little bit of what it is that we ended up doing yesterday we practically spent all afternoon till nighttime trying to figure something out and we ended up doing it it was pitch black i thought hey let me just show them now during daylight so you guys can see good what it was that we ended up doing here in the stove so it's installed so this burner that we purchased off amazon which is the one that we went with um is the type of burner that people buy for their rvs for camp outs and stuff like that so it has these long legs on them um so we cut those off because we wanted it to fit in this very small square and make it fit nice and snug and the problem that we were having is that the actual connection for the gas since this is a gas burner was crashing with the bottom of the countertop so we had to keep cutting deep and deeper and deeper to make make sure that this fit the stove is pretty much just this and the burner and the burner so this is a piece of sheet metal we added because we did not want anyone to even ourselves to look down so 
if you look right here in the middle of the stove of the burner itself you could see that you could see down through here so you were able to see that all around and that did not look aesthetically nice at all my father-in-law had this extra piece of sheet metal laying around so we cut it to size on the areas that we wanted to cover and then we used a high heat uh, spray paint to paint it black so that that way it looks nice and aesthetically nice and we painted the bottom of the countertop that you would be able to see as well so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be rendering putting stucco here and then and inside the access doors we're gonna render that as well just yeah. so that when you open it it looks aesthetically, nice, pleasing. aesthetically pleasing so let's do that and then the next thing you'll see us doing is painting To render these sections, we use the same instructions as given in our previous videos. Okay, so I just finished adding this side and this is how it looks. What we did up what I did up here was I kind of made like a little frame like if the wall would come all the way up and then when it completely dries, I'm going to well, I could do it now, actually. I don't want to play around, you see, because I just did that. And look, this cracked here. So I want to be very careful because I, how I've said before, I hate this process. And oh, look what I just did. You see? So just wait for it to dry and then you can fix the little touches. We also rendered the inside of the access doors. Remember to mist the door rock before adding the stucco. For smaller sections like these, we used our hands and just pressed the stucco manually. You guys saw our last video we got a little puppy um i know this is mid video but if you guys hear her today is she's crate training um so yeah we want to apologize if you guys hear her when we're talking she's crate training i promise she has a good life and she's not tortured <laughs> i know she sounds like she is but she's not so today we plan on painting before we paint, we're going to be masking everything up since we do have everything installed already. Just to uh, make sure that we don't get paint where we don't want it. Yes. And then once we do that, we're going to go ahead and apply the paint. Today, hopefully, we get the finished look. And maybe, just maybe, we'll cook something. Ooh. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> you want to make sure to tape any edges that you don't want paint to get on. Alright, so with that done, we're going to be taping the ground. Guys, sorry for the wind. It's very windy day today. It's beautiful to be outside, but not to record. So we're taping the ground right now. Um, if you're going to be doing adding tile to the ground or doing anything else, you can skip this step altogether. We wanted to do it just to have the, a seamless finish for the kitchen and for this video. Um, but like I said, if you're going to be installing tile like we are in the future, you could skip this step. But let's go ahead and do that and then we're going to get to painting we just finished taping we did everything across the house so i think we haven't shown you guys how the dried um stucco look that we added i had said previously that don't worry if it's gonna be another color it always happens it happened to us on the couch if you haven't seen that video go check it out it'll be linked below it happens if you do a stucco a different day it's gonna look a different color so if you are looking into leaving at this natural color just make sure you do the whole thing in the same day that way you don't have these differences in tone we weren't worried about that because we're actually painting again sorry for the wind this part right here is part of the flooring that was already there the concrete slab the concrete slab what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be painting the whole thing up to the grass so it looks like one whole structure and we don't have the difference because obviously back here we can't put tile so we just want to make it seem like the kitchen's coming off the floor all the way up look at her baby she's sleeping oh look at her baby you guys Aww. so for those that don't know we got this camera off amazon it is amazing if you have pets 
We'll put it below. Yeah, he's an obsessed dad, you guys. He watches her all day long. So she's inside right now. She's had a rough morning, but she's been napping for a while. Oh, she's so cute. We have to show her later. All right, let's let her keep sleeping and let's get painting. I wanted to let you guys know our plan is going to be one of us is going to have a brush and we're going to paint all of the edges. And then the other one's going to be with the roller. I think I'm going to be the one with the brush. I'm going to do all of the edges around the countertop at the bottom and I'm going to bring it a little up. That way he doesn't have to worry about painting the house or whatever. So divide and conquer. To paint, you're going to need a paint tray, a roller, some stucco foam rollers, the paint, and a brush. We'll make sure to link everything below as well as the color that we used for this project. We worked in small sections to make sure that we were getting an even coat. We recommend that if you are going to paint a structure like this, you get rollers that are meant to be used on stucco and concrete finishes. This will make it a lot easier since the stucco is full of gaps and a smooth roller will not allow you to fill those gaps. Oh my god. Hi, say hi. Everybody was so nice to you. Hey. Everybody loved you. Say bye. Say bye. I'll see you later. There's too much wind today. It is not for recording, but whatever. Let's show you guys. So this is the before and after color. So this is the color that we're giving it. And this is the natural stone color. Again, you do not need to paint this if you don't want to. You could leave it as this natural um, rock color, but we decided that we wanted something a little bit more modern, I guess you would call it. So let's continue painting. We repeated the process along the entire structure. For the border of the concrete slab that was already there, we used a piece of cardboard at an angle and painted it with a brush. That way we can avoid getting the paint dirty with the grass. We also painted the inside of the access doors and this was after one coat. Hey guys, so we're exhausted. As you can see, I'm sweating and it's <laughs> not because we've been working. We've been working out. <laughs> we're bailing. This little girl has us in shape we should be adding the finishing touches now it looks good man it looks really good i love the color even more today so yeah. let's show you this type of sink brings the faucet here but we're not going to be doing that what we're going to do is use these holes to add um a sponge holder and we're going to be adding the faucet right here and it's going to be one of these that goes up i have to show you guys we bought it already a, a long time ago we just haven't really we unboxed it yesterday, so. And we'll link it below. We'll link it below. <laughs> we gotta teach them young. Soon, she'll be screwing in stuff with the. <laughs> I'm gonna try to use a miter, so. Yes. Okay, so I wanted to give you guys a little tip. Even though we taped up the barbecue, it still got pa some paint on it. So, um, little trick is you get some rubbing alcohol. The stronger, like the more pure it is, the better. This one's 91%. I have like other ones inside that are like. 40 or so get it strong and then i'm getting some napkins and it's gonna remove the paint from the metal and the stainless steel i would recommend if you're doing this obviously try it in a small section before going ahead and doing the whole thing just to make sure that it doesn't ruin your item but we've done it already on the barbecue and on the stainless steel and it's worked perfectly for us so i want to show you guys how it looks but again try it in a small section before you do the whole item while Adriana removed all of the paint, I went ahead and finished putting the barbecue together by installing the handles and the rest of the equipment. To open the hole for the faucet, we drilled a lot of smaller holes and then used a metal filer to open it to the size that we needed. They sell drill bits for this size, but this is a budget-friendly way of doing it. And the moment of truth. 
It worked. So we finally got to the part where we're completely, completely done with the kitchen. We want to shout out and say thank you to our special neighbors for the um, tarp they lent us yeah, for the, the sun. If it wasn't for that, we'd probably be too um, roasted, roasted uh, turkeys. Or yeah, something. out here because the heat <laughs> does not forgive. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> so um, I think it's time to show you guys everything we've done. Cue the montage. you guys so much we really hope you enjoyed that little montage of the video of the kitchen if you guys have any questions let us know remember comment below if you want to know any specifics that we may be able to help you with um, or that we didn't really explain too well or you think that we might not have explained too well in the video yeah just let us know and we'll be more than happy to go ahead and answer your questions we didn't really put the plumbing because we're not experts and we got help from my father which i know you guys really like him so <laughs> as you can tell we're all very tired it's been a long day we didn't want to record anything of that or put it out there just because we are not experts so we don't want to give any information if we're not 100 percent sure that it's correct maybe reach out to someone a local plumber around your area or maybe i'm sure youtube has excellent <laughs> yeah excellent videos with that so we wanted to say thank you so much so like last week or the week before that we were saying oh my god thank you for almost 50 subscribers and we're by 500 and something <laughs> we cannot believe it and let's keep on this series i mean yes we're, we're getting there and we have so many plans for this uh channel <laughs> thank you guys so much for for joining us we really hope you guys enjoyed this video we got a few comments about people asking for like the finished product we are planning on doing a last 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 video of the whole process and showing like a whole review of the, the whole backyard makeover from scratch yes yeah, so we haven't forgotten about you guys there's certain things we can't do right now because it, it would be working backwards so yeah. you I'll know hang in there a little bit longer and that's it for this week yeah. for handy creators we're all gonna go to bed like her so good night <laughs> and see y'all next time bye, bye. And guess what we're doing today we are carrying 150 bags of concrete yeah. <laughs> Lesson learned. Check your info.